Here we have a rod in equilibrium, 2200 cm, freely pivoted at P. When you see the word pivoted, you want to poke the pivot right there. See, right over there, that's your pivot. And it is held horizontally in equilibrium, which means there is no net force, no net moment, or no net torque, I guess you could call it that. Uh, thanks to a 60 Newton weight, and that's it. So don't forget, there's a weight of the rod, which is acting somewhere. Usually we say if it's a uniform rod, like this thing here. Uniform means the weight of the rod will act on the center of gravity, which is right in the middle. So this is weight. What is the weight of the rod? So this is what we're trying to find. Okay, so how do we start? When it's in equilibrium, you want to think in equilibrium. So what are the forces acting uh, on the rod itself? There is weight. This weight will cause a clockwise moment or clockwise torque. It's going to cause the rod to turn this way, like, basically. Okay, but we won't draw those arrows to confuse you. Turn about the pivot, yeah? So about. And what are the other forces? Hmm. There is this tension force on the right side right here. And that is because of a pulley system. So this is actually a tension force, lah. Why is there tension? Or oh, because of this weight law? So the 60 Newton can be rewritten right here at T. So let me rub off and say 60 Newton. Ah. So this 60 Newton will cause the rod to go anti-clockwise. Because it's pulling it up a little bit. So I'll just write here. Uh, anti-clockwise. Nah. Pardon my writing. Anti-clockwise torque or moment. How do we find this calculation? So there's two ways to do this. I'm going to show you both ways. Make sure you know how to do both of them. It's very helpful during exams because sometimes one way is easier than the other. So how to do moment when your object is in equilibrium, you can do clockwise moment or torque equals to anti-clockwise moment or torque. So what's a clockwise thing? Weight. Okay, so weight. So you just write the low. Weight is how many? Um, force times distance. So I'm going to do the force times distance or I should say perpendicular force times distance perpendicular force times distance so that one is weight law okay so weight it's perpendicular to the rod so that's the perpendicular force distance what's the distance from here to here that will be 100 minus 40 so 60 cm and I'm going to keep everything in cm because I can because both sides the cm will cancel out okay and the other side, what is the perpendicular force? Now we have a problem here because this tension uh, is not exactly perpendicular. It's at an angle. So you need to find what is this perpendicular component of the force. What is this? Ty. How do we find Ty? Well, let's draw some triangles, shall we? So if I just kind of squeeze everything in there a bit. Okay, you have the horizontal component, it's a vertical component. You can also draw on this side, la. it's the same thing, TY pointing up. So this vertical component is actually, if I draw this angle here, okay, that will be opposite hypotenuse, so 60 sine 30. That is the perpendicular force. Yeah, perpendicular to the rod, ma. Okay, so this is one way you resolve the force. Now it's perpendicular, very nice. So 60 sine 30. Let's write it out, 60 sine 30 times the distance. Okay, so this tension force is acting on the end of the rod all the way to the pivot. That will be, let's draw this distance. This will be 200 minus 40. So that's 160. There we go. So we write that out, 160 times 160 cm. Then if you find that... We can actually calculate W now. So let's do that calculation for W. So I got 80. I think 80. So 80 Newtons is the weight of the rod using this method. Okay, so you can look around. Oh, 80. There it is. So the answer is C. Okay, so you said, Miss, you mentioned another method. What is the other method? Okay, to do that, let me duplicate the picture and show you another one down here. So note that in the first part, we resolve the force. What I mean is, you have a 60 Newton, yes. But you need to know what is the perpendicular force, and that's why we use this times the distance. Huh? The second method is, 
What if you don't want to resolve the force? You want to resolve the distance to find perpendicular distance. You can do that too. So what do I mean by perpendicular distance? Okay, so you see, uh, this tension force, 60 Newton, is along this line. So I can extend this entire line of action pretty much across the whole thing like this. Now well, I'm going to try to draw as long as I can. Imagine it's a straight line. So this is the whole thing is your 60 Newton force, line of action. Okay. Next, if you want to calculate moments, okay, so on we of course we have weight on one end. If you, are, you are forget where the weight comes from, okay, weight will cause a clockwise moment. And that will be W times what was it that we found just now? 60 cm. Okay, so I'm just gonna write 60. But what about the clockwise force? Now this one we are going to use force times perpendicular distance to calculate torque or moment. What that means is, if I extend the whole line of action like that, I can draw a perpendicular line from the pivot to the force, like this. This here is what we call the perpendicular distance. So yeah, if you want to use 60 Newton, sure. 60 Newton is a force, but you must multiply it by the perpendicular distance. And to find that, you need to do some trigonometry as well. So here will be 30 degrees. This end of the triangle, I mean, if you can see it, it's something like this. Okay. You try to find what this length, this one up here is 160 cm. Because 200 minus 40, so this is 160. What's that length? Oh, this length here is our good old 160 sine 30 in cms. So that's why you got to write down 160 sine 30. Let's try it out and see what we get at the end. It should be the same. By the way, it's good to know how to do both methods because if you have time during paper, paper one, you do both methods. So if they agree, then you know for sure it's correct. So yeah, pay close attention. The second one was we are resolving distance. Hence, the sine 30 is where the distance is. The, the per perpendicular distance to the force line of action. So you can compare both of these methods. Rewind back and see method one, you are resolving the force. Method two, you are resolving the distance. Which one is easier? It really depends. Some situation, one of these will be easier. Some situation, the other one will be easier. But end of the day, you are just resolving forces. You are just resolving either forces or distances. Okay? So that's all for this question. Hope that was helpful. If you've got any doubts, just comment. Lah. Comment below. See you in the next question.